Hello, everybody. How the hell are you doing out there? It's Doc Kane coming at you from Kobe, Japan, on June eighth, twenty twenty one, with the podcast "Marketers Who Can't Market." What is the podcast? You ask if this is your first time here. You've got to catch up a little bit. There's a. I think this is episode twenty six. Oh my heavens, we're almost a month in. But what is the podcast? The podcast is uh, the place to come if you uh, are an experienced marketer or a new marketer and you think uh, you kind of know what you're doing, you've done an all right job, but lately you're not so sure that you got it all down anymore and you're wondering uh, why am I stuck and how can I get unstuck and get back to building your business or somebody else's business if you got your button chair and you're a marketing person at a company. That's what we do here. And sometimes we talk about tools, and sometimes we talk about um, theory, sometimes we talk about ideas, sometimes we talk about the lack of ideas that we have. And uh, today, I was thinking about doing something, and I'm almost still wrestling with this. I wanted to do this uh, story about loyalty programs and where are the loyalty programs? Uh, I don't really see them anymore. When I was younger and when I worked in the music business, we did a lot of um, promotions and marketing uh, programs based upon uh, word of mouth and loyalty programs and getting people involved, involved with the artists on the label. We did things like coffee shops and handed out things uh, on campus. We went to shows and all sorts of things, and we tried to get people interested. This, of course, was before the Internet, and um, that's how you did it back then, right? And before the 90s, when I was doing that sort of stuff, they were doing all sorts of other things, right? Um, and it worked. Uh, it took effort and hustle, and you got belly to belly with people like you do with traditional sales, and uh, you got to see things happen. And I think uh, these days we have forgotten that that works. Um, and to a degree, there are disadvantages to the way we've become so accustomed to staring at a phone. Staring at a phone is where I was before my elbow hit my mouse and stopped my recording. <laughs> ah, such is technology, right? Mm. But yeah, we've gotten so accustomed to uh, looking at a phone, and if somebody were to come up to us out on the street, uh, it might be quite shocking. It was shocking in the 1995 when I was trying to give out CDs to people, and they were afraid. No, don't give me anything, you crazy person. You must be a religious fanatic or something like that. This is probably what people thought. Um... This is where we're at today. Um, we think only online. We think about ourselves, I think, and less about people, um, people who make up the space around us, the community around us, this sort of thing. And so while I was uh, thinking about talking about loyalty programs tonight, and hopefully I'll have enough to say about this on, on another day, I... Um, was kind of running through this uh, online mm, situation I came across tonight, and I had just mentioned it to my wife, and she, of course, being mindful of my ability to d disappear into a hole uh, of <laughs> of um, what exactly a hole of. Uh, uh, Mm, some sort of like bottomless pit of angst, I think, as I deal with the insanity of online things. And uh, you try to take this stuff with a, a grain of salt, but uh, I have, uh, I get mad about some of this stuff. And so I ran into this situation today, and I think it's human, right? But uh, I need her to yank me back to reality and say things like, uh, this is sounds to me like Twitter to you, is what she said just a few moments ago, and um, she's probably right, and um, it's a shame, really, because you're tr I'm trying to uh, get information from a number of groups that I'm in on Facebook, and um, 
there is some good stuff in there, but uh, overwhelmingly it starts to turn sour after a while. And so this conversation that I've alluded to, uh, it wasn't a conversation. I mean, a guy posted a thing in this group about how he's utilizing a certain AI technology to craft uh, content. So there are a couple of these platforms. One is getting a particular, a particular amount of attention right now um, among uh, people interested in copywriting, not people with a talent for copywriting or an ability to write at all. It seems like these folks are just looking for an easy way to create content because that idea to them is uh, one that will uh, eventually put money into their pocket. And so this particular person was referencing this AI software that he's using and this um, miracle discovery that he landed upon and was so pleased to share with everybody. And um, the discovery was that, uh, that he has found that if he puts um, queries out on uh, Haro, which is help a reporter out, if he puts queries out there requesting sources, and if you don't know anything about help a reporter out, basically the way it works is it's largely used by journalists and people trying to create um, books. And um, when you craft a book, you often want to kind of refer to experts out of your field of expertise or in the same area to flesh out and make the book more meaty, right? To um, add more legitimacy to it and to make it a good read. Um, and journalists do this for the same reason. They're looking to kind of uh, uh, create a robust article, and then they and they need sources. So journalists use this tool. It's an online email service, basically called Help a Reporter Out. And a journalist or an author will submit a um, what's known as a query or a request for sources, people who could comment about a certain topic, and they send out this uh, request saying like for example um, I'm doing an article about um, low-fat cakes and um, can you answer these questions about uh, low-fat cakes what are the best kind of ingredients to use and um, what sort of things do you want to stay away from are there any tips or tricks to making these things uh, outside of what you might read in a cookbook let's say this sort of thing right and so people who have a knowledge of cakes bakers, um, maybe recipe makers, other bloggers who would like to have exposure from an article or a book will submit their answers to these questions, right? So if this journalist or author has created a, uh, a decent enough query, and they may get um, 10, 15, 20 plus, maybe even more uh, responses from potential sources, okay? So think of this as a, a lot of free um, advice and um, rich content, if you will, in the form of an email response about uh, low-fat baking, right, in this example. So this particular person has said, hey, I discovered this neat little, uh, this neat little trick where I can, uh, you didn't say trick, but I, I, I discovered this uh, very wonderful method that helps you that is helping him write his books and articles super fast and uh, what he does is he combines this AI software with uh, help a recorder help a reporter out requests and he sends out a query people respond back and he's saying that he uses this material in some creative way to create finish his articles and books and I read this and I thought, like, wait a minute, uh, is this guy saying that he's he's asking experts for uh, information regarding some sort of question he has because he's writing an article or he's writing a book and he needs to kind of suss out good sources, right? Is he taking that material that they respond uh, in kind to his request for and he's then taking that and putting it into an article or and a book without sourcing them without or excuse me without referencing them it is sure as hell that's what it sounded like so i asked uh when you I typed this question out you know when you are you i'm curious are you saying that when you uh excuse me i said are you curious when you i'm curious when you reach out to these people 
Are you referencing them as sources in your material, or are you just taking the material and using it to write your stories? Um, and he said a one-word response, which is typical of this sort of question where I'm a bit pointed, and he said, uh, both, was his answer. Both. Which... <laughs> which I take to mean maybe one or two people he'll use as a source if he's being truthful in his response. But largely, he's just going to take all of this information that people have given to him under the guise or under the, uh, under the impression, rather, that they're providing the up this information with the hope that this person is going to maybe get in touch with them and, and source or excuse me, and reference them in an article. So 10, 20 people are saying, hey, here's what you do, here's all this great information, da 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 da, da. here's cool uh, content for you, please contact me for your story. And it sounds like, based on what he said, and based on his response, that he's not going to use that material for any kind of real purpose uh, where he's looking to credit them and give them a link or whatever the hell it is they want. He's just going to take that information and call it his own. And he's going to plug it into this AI thing, which maybe will garble it out into something that is, uh, is quote-unquote original. And so maybe he feels like, oh, I'm not really stealing from anybody because that's exactly what it is. Because I push it through this AI thing, and the AI thing changes it. Uh, and uh, I was telling my wife about this, and uh, she found it as uh, shocking as I did. And I, I just, like, I don't get it. I don't understand where, what's the disconnect with regard to integrity here. And and people are responding back to him, even people who own companies uh, that are players in this space, this SEO, internet, online marketing space, significant companies saying like, wow, that's great, or cool, or awesome, or nice job, or do they not get it? They do not get that this is kind of like upfront a lie, and then on the back end, the theft. <laughs> That's totally what it is. Um, and if he wanted to elaborate on it, I'm sure he could have, but he chose not to, and he just decided to say both, which gives me all the room to kind of guess, even though I don't think I'm really guessing a whole lot. It seems quite clear that that's what's happening here. But this is like endemic, I think, in online marketing today. It's what I talked about yesterday, this idea of taking everything um, with uh, an, an eye towards skepticism, bordering on being a, a cynic. Can you see why, right? Under no real... <laughs> under no real... Um, you know, measure of... Uh, ethics and morality and integrity without even going overboard on those three things is this in any way acceptable this is what's happening to marketing right and it's just it's unbelievable to me and um i you know this is one of those things that you can talk about and you're never going to change people's minds about right it's about something i alluded to some you know weeks ago where you can't change people's minds if they don't have this kind of fiber within them, then you can't you can't weave it. It's just not there, right? So all I'm, I'm I'm mentioning this in part to kind of because I'm just awestruck over it, and also to make sure that if you are someone who you who considers themselves to be of uh, some sort of, um, of of in possession of some sort of integrity, and when you find this kind of odd, odd and disappointing as well, that I want you to be aware that this is happening, right? That this is happening all over the place. It's about the case studies I mentioned yesterday that aren't really case studies. They're self-interested, dr driven content. The same thing is going on here. It's all over Facebook. I see it in copywriting forums. I see it everywhere. And it is, as my wife suggested, uh, a lot like Twitter. And it is probably worth me turning off. Um, and it's really a shame. Like I, I this this week in this same place, I managed to uh, to find someone who was interested in working with me in another country, and um, and that's a good thing, right? 
uh, and that's why I've stuck with it, even though I muted the conversations a couple days ago, and still they filter their way through. Facebook, it seems like you can't fucking turn the stuff off enough. It keeps seeping through like sewage does. It's just fucking everywhere. And uh, be aware of it, because it's not going anywhere. Do good, be good is kind of what I say, right? I'm not uh, perfect, and uh, I have my own uh, problems, as everybody does. Uh, but I do tend to kind of uh, live with uh, my mindset on a certain compass. It's based on what I learned as a kid. My grandmother one day, uh, when I, I used to park outside of this... Uh, when I lived with her many, many years ago, I, I used to drive to a uh, magazine store to look for magazines, and there was very little parking, and so I would park in the grocery store next door, which had a huge lot, as you might imagine, and my grandmother um, asked me one day, oh, well, where is it that you park when you go to the, the magazine store? And I said, oh, I just park in the, uh, in the grocery store lot, and she said, oh, well, um, you might want to consider going into the grocery store and maybe like buying a loaf of bread or something like that just because, you know, that parking lot is meant for the uh, grocery store people and then that would be okay. That's what I grew up with, right? And uh, I am proud of that. And uh, my grandmother's voice rings in my head when I consider stepping out of that boundary at all. And, uh, I, I, again, I can't say that I, uh, I, I don't necessarily do this, uh, on occasion, but, um, I think there are limits, right? This sort of thing just screams to me as, uh, out of bounds. But anyway, that's that. So be aware of it. Uh, don't do it if you, uh are hearing people say, well, it's fine, it's fine, it's just running it through a computer program, and these people will never know any different, right? Mm -hmm. um, not, another thing that they used to say about grandmothers, like, don't write it unless you uh, would be okay with your grandmother seeing it on the front page of the newspaper, right? Right. So that's it for today. That's all I have to say. A bit of a somber delivery, if you will. Tomorrow... I don't know what I'm going to talk about. Uh, maybe loyalty programs. Maybe not. Something a bit more uplifting, I hope, for June 9th. But today is June 8th. Uh, if you dug it, if you got anything from it, if you have ideas, by the way, um, if, you, if you have ideas about uh, where there are good places for people interested in uh, marketing, not typical, uh, not just typical marketing, uh, as in like, company driven marketing but also online stuff where you're talking about entrepreneurs and side hustles and are there places that you go either online or elsewhere in some sort of gated community if you will maybe there's a slack group you belong to and that you find there's uh, people there who are good and offering good commentary and there's none of this craziness uh, then please share that in the uh, comments or email me doc at nihon hustle I'd love to spread the word on those sorts of places so that there are kind of better places to hang out and get stuff done without the aggravation of uh, this sort of behavior. Okay, like I was about to say, if you dug it, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to. You can ring the dingity dingity bell if you're uh, in need of a reminder to come back tomorrow. But as always, we're here every day. All right, so... Peace out for now. We will catch up with you later on the podcast. Have a wonderful day, wonderful night, wherever you are in the world. Take it easy.